Welcome to NSG 217 Study Session 3. We're talking about respiratory system assessment. Introduction. The respiratory system is made up of organs in your body that help you to breathe. Remember that the respiration enables breathing. The goal of breathing is to deliver oxygen to the body and to take away carbon dioxide. In this study session, you will learn about the assessment of the respiratory system. This shall focus specifically on description of the chest landmarks, normal and abnormal breath sounds, assessment of the thorax and lungs. Learning outcomes for study session 3. When you study this session, you should be able to 1. Explain the overview of respiratory assessment. Number 2. Describe the chest landmarks. Number 3. Describe five abnormalities of the chest wall. Number 4. Differentiate between normal and abnormal adventitious breath sounds. And lastly, Describe how you will carry out respiratory assessment on a client. Overview of respiratory assessment. The assessment of the respiratory system, that is thorax and lungs, is fundamental to determining the client's oxygenation status. Changes in the respiratory system can happen suddenly or gradually. Chest landmarks. Chest landmarks consist of a series of imaginary lines on the chest wall, the ribs, and some spinous processes. The imaginary lines consist of three series of lines, the anterior, the lateral, and the posterior. The diagram below illustrates that of chest landmarks. A. The anterior series of lines consist of the following. Number one, the mid sternal line. This is a vertical line that runs through the center of the sternum. Number two, the mid clavicular line, that is right and left. These are vertical lines from the midpoint of the clavicles. Now, B, the lateral series of lines consists of three lines. Number one, anterior axillary lines right and left they are vertical lines from the anterior axillary folds number two the mid axillary line this is a vertical line from the apex of the axilla number three posterior axillary line this is a vertical line from the posterior axillary fold c the posterior series of lines consists of 1. The vertebral line. This is a vertical line along the spinous processes from C7 to T12. Number 2. The scapular line, right and left, are vertical lines from inferior angles of the scapulae. Establishing the positions of each rib and specific spinous processes will help you determine the underlying lobes of the lung. Before you can locate the rib anteriorly, you must first identify the angle of Lewis. The angle of Lewis is the junction between the body of the sternum, that is breastbone, and the manubrium, that is upper part of the sternum, to which the clavicle is joined. You will recall that anteriorly, most ribs are attached to the sternum. The upper border of the second rib attaches to the sternum at this manubriosternal junction, that is, angle of Louis. If you want to locate the manubrium, you will first palpate the clavicle and follow its course to where it attaches to the manubrium. Then you will palpate and count distal ribs and intercostal spaces from the second rib.
position stroke lighting stroke draping position patient you sit upright on the examination table the patient and should remain at their side when the back is examined the patient is usually asked to move their arm forward hug themselves position so that the scapulae are not in the way of examining the upper lung field lightning adjusted so that it is ideal draping the chest should be fully exposed exposure time should be minimized the basic steps of examination health history number one any risk factor for respiratory disease number two smoking the pack per year b exposure to smoke and c history of attempt to quit methods and results number three sedentary lifestyle or immobilization number four age under age environmental exposure and lastly dust chemicals asbestos and air pollution number five obesity and lastly number six family history under sputum the, consider the amount the color presence of blood that is hemoptesis the odor the consistency and pattern of production past health history respiratory infections or disease that is the upper respiratory infection also history of trauma history of previous surgery also chronic conditions of other systems we consider the family health history is there tuberculosis emphysema lung cancer allergies or asthma now inspection trachea deviation can suggest tension pneumothorax on the chest wall deformities the following are examples of chest deformities number one kyphosis this means curvature of the spine anterior posterior which is illustrated in the picture below number two scoliosis this is curvature of the spine that is lateral illustrated in the diagram below number three barrel chest in this condition chest wall increased anterior posterior that is it is normal in children which is typical of hyperinflation seen in copd illustrated in the diagram below number four pectus excavatum that is cobbler's chest pectus excavatum also known as sunken or funnel chest is a congenital chest deformity in which several ribs and the sternum grow abnormally producing a concave or caved in appearance in the anterior chest wall number five pectus carinatum that sees pigeon chest pectus carinatum may occur as a solitary abnormality or in association with other genetic disorders or syndrome this condition causes the sternum to protrude with a narrow depression along the side of the chest 
This gives the chest a bold out appearance similar to that of a pigeon as illustrated in the diagram below. Practical steps for respiratory assessment. Tactile fremitors. This is a vibration felt by palpation. Place your open palm against the upper portion of the anterior wall, making sure that the finger do not just touch the chest. Ask the client to repeat the phrase 99 or another resonant phrase while you systematically move your palms over the chest from the central airway to the lungs periphery. The different pictorial assessment of expiration, inspiration, and also percussion of the anterior chest wall and direct percussion of clavicles for disease in lung apex. Auscultation is used to assess breath sounds. Ask the patient to breathe in and out slowly and deeply through the mouth. Begin at the apex of each lung and zigzag downward between intercostal spaces. Listen with the diaphragm portion of the stethoscope. We are scotted for normal breath sounds, note, pitch, intensity, quality, and duration. Normal breath sound. Bronchial, which is add over the trachea and main stem bronchi. That is second to fourth intercostal spaces, either side of the sternum anteriorly, and third to sixth intercostal space along the vertebrae posteriorly. The sound are described as tubular and ash, also known as tracheal breath sound. Bronchiovesicular. It is aired over the major bronchi below the clavicles in the upper of the chest anteriorly. Bronchiovesical sound and over the peripheral lung denotes pathology. The sounds are described as medium pitched and continuous throughout inspiration and expiration. Vesicula it is add over the peripheral lung, described as soft and low pitched, best add on inspiration. Diminished, it is add with shallow breathing, normal in obese patients with excessive adipose tissue and during pregnancy. Can also indicate an obstructed airway partial or total lung collapse or chronic lung disease. The table below shows steps to procedures, actions and rationales behind each. Summary of study session 3. In this study session, you've learned that 1. The assessment of the respiratory system, that is the thorax and the lung, is fundamental to determining the patient's or client's oxygenation status. Number two, chest landmarks consist of a series of imaginary lines on the chest wall, the ribs, and some spinous processes. The imaginary lines consist of, the, of three series of lines, that is the anterior, the lateral and the posterior. Number three, examples of chest wall diseases are kyphosis, scoliosis, viral chest, pectus escabactum, that is cobbler's chest, pectus carinatum, that is pigeon chest. Thank you. We've come to the end of this study session.